So we have talked about utility functions as a way of representing preferences. Now, from a given utility function, we will be able to compare any two bundles, thereby creating a binary relation. Let's discuss this some more. We start with the utility function. So far, no assumptions are made on the utility function, except that the domain is the first quadrant that we call R2+, and the codomain is R. The utility function must return a number for every possible bundle. We will now create a binary relation, the weak preference relation from this utility function. Mathematically, this is how we do it. Just take any two bundles. We have an X bundle consisting of X1 units of the first good and X2 units of the second good. We have a Y bundle with Y1, Y2 units of each good. To create the weak preference relation, I need to be able to compare these two bundles. We will see that the X bundle is weakly preferred to the Y bundle if and only if the utility we get from the X bundle is greater than or equal to the utility experience from the Y bundle. With the utility function, instead of comparing bundles, we can now simply compare numbers. It's not hard to see that if we create a binary relation like this from a utility function, it will automatically be a total order. This follows from the fact that greater than or equal to is a total order on R. For example, totality is satisfied. It must be the case that the utility from the first bundle is greater than or equal to the utility of the second bundle, or the utility from the second bundle is greater than or equal to the utility of the first bundle, or both. And it's straightforward to check the other three conditions, reflexivity, antisymmetry, and transitivity. Now that we know that we can create a weak preference relation from a utility function, we will be able to find indifference curves from this function. So let's again start with an arbitrary utility function. Each amount of utility will be associated with an indifference curve. There is one indifference curve for 10 units of utility and another one for 20 units of utility and so on. Let's use the symbol U0 to denote a certain amount of utility. The indifference curve for this level of utility is then the collection of all bundles, x1, x2, which will provide the consumer with this exact amount of utility. Without further assumptions, we cannot really say anything specific about the indifference curve, and we really ought to call it an indifference set in this case. It is possible that there are no bundles associated with this level of utility. The indifference curve could consist of a single bundle, it could be a fat indifference curve, or even all of the first quadrant. Anything is possible without additional assumptions. Given a utility function, there is a connection between the microeconomic concept indifference curve and the mathematical concept level curve. An indifference curve is simply a level curve of the utility function. Let's look at an example. Here is our simple utility function again. u is equal to 4x1, x2. The indifference curve providing 8 units of utility is the level curve u equal to 8. That is, it's the collection of bundles x1, x2 satisfying the relationship 4x1, x2 is equal to 8. A level curve, which in our case is an indifference curve, will always impose an implicit relationship between the variables of the function. In some cases, although not in all cases, it's possible to convert an implicit relationship into an explicit one. In our case, if we restrict x1 and x2 to be strictly positive, then I can solve my implicit relationship for x2 by dividing both sides by x1. My explicit relationship is then x2 is equal to 2 divided by x1. Having an explicit relationship makes it much simpler to draw the indifference curve. In our case, the indifference curve is this smooth, strictly decreasing convex curve. 